Hey, with, with with what Aaron had to say yesterday about his uncertain future, as this season winds down, I'm I'm curious if if knowing that the future is uncertain, does that add any pressure, or does that change at all the way that you you, you view the approach the the end of the season? I think all of us are pretty locked in in what's right in front of us. We know that if we start focusing on things down the road, it just it doesn't benefit you for the near future. And we know that we got a great opponent coming in here, a team that's battled everybody. I think they've had the lead in 14 of their 15 games. And so to, you know, look elsewhere, we'd be doing a, a disservice, um, you know, to this football team. So we're, we're, we're solely focused right now on the, on the Minnesota Vikings. Dave McGargy. You had talked the other day about trying not to micromanage players and assistants and how that kind of trust with them kind of develops over time. I'm just wondering, at what point did you realize you wanted to be that kind of coach who gave that type of autonomy to your assistants, your players, and the like? I, I just think that's something that's uh, naturally developed. Um, I mean, certainly you always want to be around people that not only that you trust but also respect uh, how they how they go about their business, how they prepare. And that's something that you just, as you learn your team and you learn your assistants and you learn you, there's so many great people here that are about the team and they're just very disciplined in, in doing uh, their part and, and trying to be the best version of themselves. And, um, you know, we're just lucky to have those type of people both in our locker room and in our coaching staff. Just out of curiosity, what's the coldest game you've ever coached in, and what do you remember about it? Ironically enough, Mike, I think it was here um, when I was coaching with the Houston Texans back in, it was either 2008 or 2009. I think it was 2008, 2000. I think, yeah. Yeah, it, I think that might have been the coldest one that I've ever experienced. Jason Wildey. Hey, Matt, um, I know you're happy to have Ja getting as much work as he's getting. It, do you have hope of him playing on Sunday, or are you taking a longer-term view with him? Well, I, yeah, I would say it's probably a, a longer-term view, um, unless something drastically changes here in the next couple of days. Chris Thomason from Minnesota. Yeah, hey, Coach, got a quick question, and maybe I could ask a quick follow too. Uh could you just – Devondre Campbell obviously was a solid player with Atlanta and the Cardinals, but he's taken it to another level this year. I mean, Pro Bowl, All-Pro type season he's having. What has he done to take it to even another level this season? Well, I think it's all about opportunity. He's a guy that prepares the right way, and, um, you know, he's really the focal point of, of our defense, the guy that's uh, – communicating the call on every play he, he's out there in a featured role no matter what the personnel grouping if we we're out there with one linebacker he's the guy that's in the game so I just think it's more or less of him taking advantage of the opportunity and if I could just follow what you were asked before uh, how much of a challenge could the cold weather be Sunday night and I know it's often cold at Lambeau Field but would you consider this even extreme if it's in the single digits or even zero yeah, I mean, I don't try to focus on that too much. That's that's totally out of our control. But you, you do, in a sense, have to get your mind right for that. And just make sure you're prepared. I know it's a lot easier for, for myself as a coach to just make sure that you got the right clothing on. But our players definitely have to get, get their mind right for that. And in my opinion, I, I do think it's one of the advantages that we have of just playing in a – outdoor environment like that. Tom Silverstein. Yeah. Uh, what was Mr. Kiki's inactive on Sunday? Was it a performance thing or was there something else going on there? Yeah, that was a total personal um, thing that we were going through. Ryan Wood. Hey, Matt. Uh, obviously, Nathaniel got head coaching consideration last year and, and, and he's getting it again this year as someone who's been a very successful head coach coming in in, in your three seasons I'm curious what what you see in Nathaniel as a potential head coaching candidate and if you think he's ready to take on a job like that and why 
Yeah, I absolutely do, and I'm, I'm excited for him. I, I think if I was a team out there uh, that had a vacancy, I would absolutely want to get him in a room. I, I just think there's so many great qualities about him. First and foremost, it starts with who he is as a man. Um, he's a man of the highest of, of integrity. He treats people the right way. And then I think just he cares about people, not only the other coaches on our staff, but the players. And the players feel that. The players know that. He's extreme, extremely intelligent. He knows ball. Um, he's very innovative in multiple areas, not only when it comes to scheme, but his ability to um, kind of how he was a big reason how we got our off-season program with all the virtual learning that we did with our guys. Uh, he's just, there's so many great qualities about him. And, uh, you know, it's funny how things work out in, in, in crazy ways. He's not a guy that prior to us working together, I, I'd never worked with him before, but um, so fortunate that he's been a part of this staff. And he is as big of a reason as anybody of our success here. And um, I would hate to lose him, but at the same time, I would be so happy for him. And I know he's ready for that opportunity. Dave Sunwoldy. Hey, Matt, I'm wondering when you were in Atlanta or L.A. or in um, Tennessee, I'm guessing when you were prepping for games, you would see Devontae on opposing defense film that you were getting ready for. I'm wondering what your impression was of him then, and then once you got here and got to be around him, how did that evolve to what I would assume would be even further appreciation for him? Yeah, I think it's like any of our guys that when you see crossover tape, you you know that like who stands out and who's a great player. But until you get around these guys and are around them on a daily basis and you start to figure out what makes them so great, and obviously he's got incredible talent, but I think it's just the work that he puts in too. You see it out there on the practice field, how he prepares on a daily basis, the effort with which he – he goes out there with um, the finish and how he holds everybody in that room to such a high standard. He's extremely intelligent. Football uh, comes very easy to him and in terms of he's just got a great natural feel. Uh, he can articulate what's going on out there on the field. Um, and I think that anytime you have guys that are very talented and you combine that with the work ethic and the intelligence, then you start getting Hall of Famers, and I think, you know, that's the type of player he is. Bill Hubert. Hey, Matt, where are you, where are you guys at COVID-wise, and what is plan B at punter if Bojo is not able to go on Sunday? Yes, uh, as far as the COVID, um, we had a couple guys back in the building today that, that went on the list, um, you know, on Saturday. Um but we've had three new positives, one being a support staff, and the, the other two are not active on our roster. So, you know, it's unfortunate, but, um, you know, it, it's still out there and it's still ongoing. So we got to make sure we take every necessary precaution that we can. And we have a, we have a couple um, contingency plans if Bojo's not available for Sunday. Hey, uh, Matt, so with Sedarius, I know you said it's day by day, but what is the confidence that he'll be able to return at all this season, whether it's regular season or in the postseason? Um, you know, that's one of those things that I'm not trying to look too far ahead. Again, just taking it a day at a time. And if he's back, when he's back, that, that'll be a, sh a shot in the arm for us. Mark Daniels. Hey, Matt, we heard from Kenny yesterday, uh, and he played a few more snaps than I think he was uh, planning on for Cleveland, but now you've had a few guys that have come back off COVID. Have you gotten any kind of book on how they fare physically coming out of it in a game? Yeah, I think it's totally case by case in terms of just how affected these guys are by the symptoms. Some guys are brought down a little bit further than others. Some guys are, you know, feel like nothing's even wrong with them, so... Um, you know, it's total case by case. Mike Farnes. Well, Matt, tell me about watching the Jets game on TV the other day. 
and Robert's on the phone and <laughs> your feet is coming a little bit faster. <laughs> what are friend? That's what friends are for, right? To leave them in suspense. Well, I don't think I was leaving Robert in too much suspense. He he kept yelling at me for telling him what, what was going on. So um, now it was a very interesting moment, I, I would say, just here you are talking to a, another head coach and he's watching his team play and certainly uh, that we'll probably never experience anything like that again, hopefully. Um, but it was it was interesting to get his perspective on, on certain things as – as the game was, you know, developing and um, just happy that they won. We'll do two more. Ryan Wood. Matt, you said Saturday you've never quite seen anything like what Rasul has done this season. I'm curious, as, as a guy who, I mean, obviously he, he came in uh, off the sideline, started off the sideline in Chicago and has gotten to this point. What were the expectations when, when he got here? What did you expect from him? And at what point did you realize that there were, want to blow whatever expectations that you had away and this was going to be what he's capable of well I think anytime a, a new player comes in the only expectation is that they work hard each and every day they become a valued member of this team um, in whatever role that may be and it was pretty obvious just talking to him that he took that approach and um, you know he, here's a guy that just when given the opportunity, he's performed. And I don't think that's by accident. I think that's by how he approaches the game, how he studies on a daily basis, and how he competes. That guy is, um, he's such a competitor, and you can see it on every play that he's out there. He's physical. Um, you know, I would say that he's a guy that he's not afraid to fail, and, and he just goes after it at the highest level on each and every play. And uh, it was pretty evident, I would say, once given the opportunity that he was going to become a, a pretty impactful player for us. And last one, Jason Wilde. Hey, Matt, you know, Aaron didn't just talk about uh, the future stuff yesterday. He also talked about his relationship with you. Um, he gives us a hard time for questioning how things were going to go in 19. But in fairness to us, the way things had ended previously, it was a fair question to wonder. Um, obviously, you guys hit it off and have been great together. I'm wondering, though, and maybe this is unfair to ask, but was there a point where you can pinpoint you felt like you guys were really kind of hitting it off and, and trending in a really good way after you'd gotten to know each other a little bit better? Was there any point that, remem that you remember that kind of jumps out at you like that? I know it was a day-by-day -day process. Yeah, I can't speak to one specific moment, but I, I just think that the longer we've been around each other, the more conversations we've had, that trust just builds and builds and builds. And not to say like every like every relationship, there's there's definitely moments where we can disagree, but I think there's enough uh, trust, love, and respect that it's okay. And I think that's how you grow in any relationship. And I think, uh, you know, a pivotal moment, I would say, for all of us here was the off season after the 2019 season of just, you know, trying to streamline and, and get everybody on the same page. And there were so many great conversations that transpired. Um, but, yeah, it's been, it's been quite a journey. It's been a lot of fun. Um, and... It's it's great just learning from a guy of his caliber. We've talked, you know, I've I know I've said this many times, but he's obviously the talent speaks for itself. But I think what is even more profound is just how his mind works. I I, I think one thing that as co as coaches here and that work with him on a daily basis that people outside of these walls don't see is is how big of a heart he has as well and how he cares for his teammates and everybody in this building and so it's been a real um uh, it's been a lot of fun working with him on a daily basis and uh, yeah, i hope that stays that way for a long time to come